shall we? Oh. Okay. Welcome. Nice to have you all on board again. So, as you already have seen in the event um, that's scheduled, there is a, a little change in, in the format. Um, we want to keep it the following way. The first part of our meeting will be only for the team leaders of the teams, or if the team leader is not there, the developers of the teams to give everyone a short briefing on what happened the last week, just so that everyone is sure that, and if nothing happened, that's not a problem because this is uh, open source. We are a community. We share, we are friends. We share what we do. So if someone has nothing done this week, no problem. You don't have to shy away and say, oh, I don't join the dev meeting because I didn't do anything. This is uh, not, not the way we want it. So just give us um, an idea what happened the last week. And if so, nothing happens, just, just tell that uh, like that. No, no, no issue with this. And the second half will be a deep discussion on the topics that are already on the table or topics that you can raise during your briefing, short briefing minutes, where you say, I want to discuss this and that. And then we have, let's say, an open end, not open in timely, but let's say uh, we don't want to um, fence the topics there. The fans, the, the, the topics shall be um, dynamic. So coming out from development, from the last week, um, coming from today's discussion, kind of. So without, without further ado, let's start. Um, Christian, maybe you, you start today. Okay, um, I hooked up the camera to the um, fisheye camera, uh, to the fisheye uh, lens, and hooked it up to the Pi, and uh, connected it to the Indie server, because uh, this camera has already drivers uh, for the uh, Indie uh, server, and uh, um, used the Indie server as um, a buffer for the Jets Nano. And um, yeah, the, the, the camera is working and I get a signal, uh, a video stream on the Nano uh, with um, an astronomy program. Um, I didn't upload the code, uh, the, the code to GitHub yet because it's work in progress because I have to get an interface to GStreamer to provide uh, the first uh, video stream so we can put it into the tracker. That's what I did from Wednesday on. First, I had to, to move to my new shop, uh, my, my new workshop. I'm already in it, as you can see in the background. And yeah, so um, the first lines of code are in place and um, the connection to the Indie server is working. So the camera, every RZ camera like this one and the other ones can be used and um, video for Linux 2 is working as well. So both are in place. Yeah, that's what I did the last week. And um, yeah, the code will be uploaded when it's clean, functional and uh, rock solid. Um, I don't like the idea to put uh, on GitHub code that is not running uh, without warnings mm -hmm. yeah so mm -hmm. um, for the next upcoming week my plans are to um, to, to write an interface for gstreamer uh, to provide uh, the first uh, videos uh, from the fish eye uh, to simple tracker mm -hmm. perfect um, you're fi finished, Kristen? I'm finished, yeah. Okay. Um, Rebecca, why not go with you next? All right, can you hear me okay? Perfect. Yeah. All right, perfect. Uh, this week, uh, Brandon and I have worked on various aspects of the UI. Uh, Right now we have, you know, the video that's come up. Uh, a few days ago I sent to Richard a working copy of, you know, 
the you asked for some of the written text to be on top of the video so i sent that to you as well as the spline that's moving to give you an idea of what it would be like if it was tracked along with the object as it's seen in the sky um, we were going to uh, think of getting that information for the, the spline. That's the, the main thing that's going to be a problem, is getting the information of where the object in the sky is located and tracking that with the spline. So I figured we might get that from the, the machine learning portion. From what I understand, the machine learning program tracks the object in the sky and so would have the coordinates for that. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And then from that, we can just use that in the and the actual layer that we put on top of the video player mm -hmm. to, to be able to plot along with it. Is, is that what you were thinking of on that portion? Uh, yes and no, but let's discuss this later mm -hmm. on. Um, I, I make a note so that we discuss later on, okay? Okay, okay. Because when you're you're talking about splines, I'm thinking that you were wanting us to to, to, to draw a line as it moves along the screen, is that right? Or... Yes and no. There, there are certain aspects mm -hmm. that um, you have to to draw in the in the interface mm -hmm. because it's not known at the time mm -hmm. um, on on the motion mm -hmm. detection part. But things that are already recognizable in the motion detection part will be part of the mm -hmm. either of the video that's streamed or mm -hmm. as a mm -hmm. a JSON file that comes along, kind of. But let's discuss this later oh. on. I made a note. Okay. Um, okay. And so for the other information that we want to get from the from Sky Sky three sixty station would be, you know, all the stats that are coming from there. And we can already display something, a mock example of that, but we won't be able to display any actual real data until we know who received it. I'm assuming but I don't know, would we be receiving it, um, you know, as a JSON file or streamed to us, you know, uh, we could, we have Django working as well as nodes so we can receive it with Django channels, you know, through some sort of socket, that, that kind of thing, and receive it that way. And then we'll go ahead and transfer it over to the view through the node. So that's what we're thinking of doing, but we just kind of need to know how we're going to get it, JSON format, mm -hmm. send stream as a JSON format, exactly mm -hmm. how that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And then once we have that, we can go ahead and actually start displaying it on the screen and you'll have a, an actual example of what, of it working. Mm -hmm. not, a, not a refined example, but something that actually works and then we can refine it after that and change it around or alter it or, or do anything else with that. Okay. So that's kind of Thank where we are. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, why not go go you next, Brad? Okay. I'm going to try to share my screen. I'm not using Fusion. That usually screws it up. But see how this works. Okay. Seems to be working. Okay. So first this week, um, I redesigned the uh, inlet for the test setup. So it'll accept any uh, ATX power supply because there is a slight issue with uh, uh, placement of some of the on-off buttons and the plugs on some of the models that are out there that make it not quite fit this. And um, so this is a good temporary solution. I think my task this week is gonna be to create a, a 3D printed adapter with the current batch of uh, enclosures that have been produced. In case this uh, problem arises in somebody's, we can just give them the adapter. And then uh, later on, I'll, I'll figure out how to retool that so it's, it's more accepting to uh, a, a bigger variety of models. Um, I fixed my printer uh, this week, my big printer. So I'm back to producing uh, parts for the test setup, which I'm almost done with. The main parts. So the only thing that I haven't printed at all is the uh, the Peltier fan mounts, uh, because those are specific to uh, the type of uh, heat sinks we're going to be using and testing. And because it's getting expensive um, to test and buy all this hardware, um, I, I I made this setup <clears throat> that I think I can get to work 
So I'm going to start printing it. I'm going to print uh, blanks to cover the slots of, you know, three of the heat sink Peltier assemblies and just have one open. Mm -hmm. And then um, that way I only have to buy one heat sink mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. test out at one quarter of the heat load. Mm -hmm. And if it works, then we'll proceed to the next step and I'll make production models for, for Boyan and George to test along with me. And um, I think also in discussion with Richard uh, is a question of uh, this design relies on extender blocks, this red thing here to penetrate the wall. Richard's design didn't have that. And the, there was some question of, do we keep the heat sink close to the wall to push it away to keep heat conduction low? We have no way to model this. So the only way to really test it is for me to build a test set up and compare the two. So I think that's probably going to be another thing I try to do this week uh, is to get those two contrasting approaches done test them with my current set of heat sinks, see which one works better, and then come up with a finalized, ready to go, like, okay, prototype, test setup to give to Boyan and George, and we can all three then start doing trials on the uh, the mock-up climate control setup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see what else is on my list. Uh, that's all I had for this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Brett. Um, is this on? Um, Lionel, go ahead. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to share my screen. All right. Okay. <laughs> that work it's seen yeah. okay so um, so what I've been doing is I've been um, trying to uh, make the prediction for the next uh, coordinate given uh, a couple of bonded box trying to uh, work out a, a model to uh, to forecast where the next uh, bonding box is going to be to uh, pass those coordinates along to the PTZ mm -hmm. So, uh, so this is actually my first uh, neural network. <laughs> never, never did one. Mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, training data. Uh, so that's uh, that's that's going to be uh, that the the idea that I had is that we take uh, every other uh, bounding box coordinate as a as a y uh, well every every uh, every other two as x and then as y so I, I take the first index the third index the fifth index as the x's and then i take the second the fourth the sixth and the eighth and so on as the y's and uh, that sort of works worked uh for this track because uh you, see, you have the the red track is the actual uh, track of the airplane uh on the lower uh, left hand side of the screen so the, the airplane went that way and the blue track is the prediction so i don't understand yet uh where the offset comes from uh i haven't uh so that's uh that's an issue but uh I think that um, also the, the bigger issue is that um, uh, you cannot uh, generalize uh, X and Y's to work all across uh, the screen. So uh, so I'm going to uh, use uh, Yannick's code and try to uh, get uh, to work on a, an array of uh, azimuth and speed instead of uh, x and y's mm -hmm. um i've got a suggestion um to make here um let's go to the right ascension and declination coordinate system because this is going to be fed uh, into ptz after all and um since you've got two angles uh, I think it is much easier uh, to determine the position in uh, 
uh, right ascension and declination because the zenith is the point in the middle and um you know exactly where it is and you know the north coordinate uh, the north and uh each other direction and um therefore this coordinate system is uh very suitable for that task so okay um christian let's discuss this afterwards um yeah let's go on lionel anything else for in your briefing for us uh no okay okay yeah in in this case you are the last for the briefers so um i'd say we can discuss um on that um topic right now um so christian if i understand you correctly you say um Lionel shall not work with x y coordinates like in pixel coordinates but more in azimuth and orientation uh, <laughs> angles mm -hmm not azimut, uh, we could use azimut and height, but uh, that had to be uh, transformed into um, into uh, right ascension and declination, because right ascension and declination <laughs> already are um, uh, spherical coordinates and is uh, the main uh, coordinate system used uh, for the sky. Uh, and um, it doesn't suffer from uh, some of the the issues uh, an azimuth and height has. You can transfer them very easily, yes, of course, but uh, the uh, accuracy goes down. And because you've got several points in the sky uh, that you can refer to, like the zenith, the north position, the meridian, etc., you can give uh, uh, um, exact position coordinates very easily yeah not, uh, not familiar with those uh, notions uh, so, so instead of azimuth and instead of x and y you say work with azimuth and no right ascension and declination because right. these are the coordinates that are uh, fit into uh, uh, ptz Okay. And declination is the 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 angle. It's like that. That's declination. Uh, yes. And, and what the right the right ascension is like that. It's okay. uh, um, um, it's um, um, put Point. to the the rotation of the Earth. Okay. So um, yeah. so if you say um. If you take a x and y coordinate here, you say uh, 800, uh, 200. So this point where my pointer is. Um, ah, yes, you have the north. So, so you work it out from the, from the north. The right ascension, you can work everything out from if you know uh, where the north is. Um, no, it's um, it's not based on on uh, north position. This is uh, what you what use uh, azimuth and height for, but um, it's um, it's based on uh, the uh, spring point uh, uh, within Earth rotation um, around the sun. So the spring point um, is um, right ascension. Zero zero zero, and um, it's referred to start date, um, and you and, and uh, this is all connected, and um, this is the main uh, coordinate system used in astronomy to determine uh, where an object is, and uh, this is used uh, for the satellites to. Um, there you have got the two line elements, and for um, ephemeridians uh, uh, you use it too, and um, it's it's the standard system for for the sky. Okay, well I'm not uh, familiar with those notions at all. I'm going to uh, look into it, so I yeah. uh, at least have a, an idea of what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm going to um, take a crash course. Hey Christian, yeah. would it make sense to introduce Lionel to the BTTS, where actually this is part? Yes. 
So what I what I understood actually it's a, a rectangular uh, coordinates trans um, transformation into polar coordinates more or less, right? Um, not exactly polar coordinates, but projected polar coordinates that uh, rotate with uh, um, in parallel to the, to the Earth axis. Mm -hmm. And you've got a different starting point. You, you, if you use uh, polar coordinates, you can use the, the spherical ones uh, um, based on azimut and uh, height. Mm -hmm. um, but they, they change from uh, place to place. Mm -hmm. And right ascension and uh, declination doesn't change. Mm -hmm. So if you've got uh, your, your observing position, and uh, let's say uh, me and Brett are observing, and I give Brett the coordinates in right ascension and declination. He, uh, these numbers, these values don't change. So we use the same coordinate and look to the <clears throat> um, same object uh, at different places. Um, yeah, if we I would use up here, that's it's really good. Yeah, yeah. If if we if we would use. Um, uh, azimut and height, then these coordinates would be different because they uh, um, they interfere with our observing position. Mm -hmm. Okay. So <laughs> if we were going to sync up a bunch of stations, this would be the system we would want to use. Yeah. Um, my question, Christian, at that point where Lionel is now thinking about these coordinates and with the intention to control the PTZ, is this actually not a part of the master control program and not part of the, the kinematics uh, classification? Um, if we use from the beginning the right coordinate system, we won't have any problem. The master control program just triggers things, but uh, determine the movement path, I think it's uh, um, it, it is done uh, within the um, within the ML part of mm -hmm. the problem. Okay, okay. So in that case, I would suggest that you and Lionel meet somewhere in 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 the near future, and you give him the details of B triple TS, what the the incoming parameters are, what the outgoing values can yeah. be. So that he gets an, an, <clears throat> a view of that? Yeah, we, yeah. we should uh, uh, set up um, a movement path and find a very good format for it, uh, so it can be passed to the uh, PTZ. OK, can we also, because the PTZ is not developed yet, so in order to make this working, could we kind of um, create a simulator for the PTZ? <laughs> Um, yeah, but creating a simulator for the PTZ or or writing the stuff that uh, alters the the uh, um, the uh, B triple TS uh, stuff, I think it's the same workload. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't think it's it's a problem just giving the coordinates or just producing a movement path. Okay. Let's say producing the same two line elements. Okay. And these can be be just passed to PTZ. Yeah. Maybe it's it's um, a good solution to uh, to see each tracked object um, like a satellite and uh, produce two line elements for it. Because then, then we have got uh, another standard that is used in the sky. Mm -hmm. And f from that, we can derive every ephemerides that we need and uh, go along with that. OK. I guess you have to meet with Lionel in the, in the next, yeah. in, the, in the near future and, and check that out, please. Yeah. OK. We'll do. Good we stuff. Do. All the things for the beautiful flower heads. A um, uh, question for Lionel, real quick. Yep. Sorry, what, what is? Didn't hear anything. 
Brad, who is talking? Um, is that Wayne? I'm going to join just... Uh, Wayne, can you hear us? Could you mute your mic? Okay. Richard, are you able to mute him? I can't hear him, so um, um, Lionel, can you uh, close your sharing? Go, please. Uh, uh, the sound's not coming from my place. Uh, someone, no, 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 no. Someone just no, no. joined. No, no, no. It's it's, uh, it's coming from, coming Wayne. from Wayne. But uh, if you right click on his window, then you can. Uh, uh, I muted. You can him. mute him. I did. I muted him. I muted him for for me. Ah, uh, okay. There we go. Okay. Uh, Lionel, did you get the videos uh, that I, I I posted? Uh. He... I think so. Yes, I uh, downloaded. Uh, yes, I, I did. I did. I did. Okay. Yes, definitely. Yeah. I was gonna. Miss, I, uh, I, was gonna miss I, I sort of keep them for later because I, I, uh, like uh, I'm not that far to uh, start training uh, lots of data. I'm still uh, in the early steps, so uh, I downloaded them so you can uh, uh, save space in whatever ways. But I did download all the folders you published. Okay, I'll take them down. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So there's a good point. Um, the on the drive we have now um, material um, uploaded, and this is only the material from Mike. So what Mike got with motion detection and the JSON files and the images with the bounding boxes overlaid, this material is on the drive now. So the question is, um, do we need more material? Because it's uh, the the folders zero to number three zero one two three are uploaded and there are still folders four six four five six seven my question is shall i upload them do we need them would do you need them lionel uh well the more the better uh yeah okay. so uh but you 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 tell me because uh you tell me uh when you upload them and I, I download them so then we can save the space but I'm uh, yeah okay uh, no need for the for saving space a... but yes okay you need the, the data so I will upload it okay I will yeah okay and I give you Thank a you. hint when when it's done yeah okay I will it's gonna take a, a while probably so um anything else on this on this section not for me. Okay, so I will raise an issue that uh, Rebecca was. Uh, no, I I will bring in an issue that Rebecca was raising um, a couple of days ago, and the question is live streaming infrastructure. What, where is live video feed streamed from? Which to where? So the infrastructure of live streaming. To the GUI. Le Rebecca, are you with us? Is Rebecca online? I, I do not see her. I think her video is frozen. Rebecca, your video is frozen and you are muted. Okay, so we skipped that point. Uh, and come back to that one later. Okay. Yeah, but this is. Uh, I have now the next four points is user interface, and actually needed here to talk about it. Okay, so I have to 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 skip a, a lot here. Um, so first of all an issue that we we all share it's the github situation so the github um, now comprises a couple of uh, repositories um, they are from developers who who set them up there but there are also other developers 
who have their own private repository and did not bring their repository in. So mm -hmm. my question is whether we can bring this to a, um, a more clean state. So Christian, this question is pointed towards you. So how can we reach a clean state there so that all work packages are referenced there? And yeah, go ahead. Um, from my experience, normally if you uh, are a member of a GitHub group and you upload it there, then it's there and you do not have to, to to make any cleaning afterwards because the merge is done already because you all contribute to one folder or uh, in the sub channels, the subfolder. Um, I think it, it is just a problem of uh, that the contribution has to be just uploaded to that folder. And if anybody is doing that in, in their group, there shouldn't be any problem. Uh, Rebecca, and if you example, want to merge, uh, if you want to merge uh, uh, an outside uh, project or uh, an outside folder uh, that you're working on privately, then you have to uh, do a merge request. Hmm. Rebecca actually <clears throat> is now working on a private repository in her own <clears throat> GitHub um, account. A question is whether she shall bring that over to. The Sky360 GitHub? Or is it just for you? Uh, she's an experimenting, so she works on her own like you do. And then when it's done, then bring it over to GitHub. Is that what you want? Um, my policy uh, from, from the last, let's say, five to six years is that I just upload uh, working code without warnings and I upload it to GitHub directly and I'm not working in my own private GitHub account. I uh, do it locally and when it's done, I upload it to GitHub if it's in, in, in a releasable state. Okay. But if, if someone else uh, does it otherwise, I don't have a problem with it. It's, I think it's just a merging issue. So from your point of view, the current situation in GitHub with the five repositories there is, you would green light it or do you say there's something we have to do to change to implement it? Um, no, because we have, uh, I think, five uh, topics to work on and uh, every team um, is providing their information into each group, each subfolder and from my side on i don't see any problem why it shouldn't work okay okay so skip that one yeah um <clears throat> if someone right. uses uh, his his or her own uh, um, private account and then merge it, uh, merges it uh, in into uh, sky 360 that's okay 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 got it but maybe we need a moderator or, or someone, a maintainer uh, for the complete uh, GitHub thing that looks over the merging process. So you, think you say you want someone else besides yourself? Uh, yeah. Okay. S someone who, who does exactly that. And um, yeah. I, I, I want to focus on um, the development of the firmware for for the ASC and um, yeah, if someone is more into the managing controlling part, that would be good that he would uh, take that part. That would be the guy. Okay, got it. Yeah. Um, hey, Yannick, I forgot about the briefing session for you. Um, you did things the last week. Do you want to share with us? Um, I, uh, to be honest, I didn't to do too much. I just worked a little bit today on a data set that would allow us to get data for, for temperature inversions. Mm -hmm. And, um, actually, and I try to, to figure out how to work with Django and 
a certain mapping package that's called leaflet mm -hmm. and but i don't have results yet so okay. that's about it okay okay that brings me to the next point um which is rebecca can you hear me now Um, yeah, discussion without Rebecca doesn't make sense here. <laughs> so my point would be the user interface has to comprise data that comes from several sources. So the question is that we should set up a list of that data. Is this Brandon? Hey, there's Brandon. Hi. Huh? Brandon, are you there? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I yeah. can hear you. Okay. So uh, you jumped in. I give you just the, the stage. Um, you did anything the last week you want to share with us? Um, I did the video mask overlay. Sorry, I'm outside. I did can, the video mask overlay. Can you, store... uh, can you talk a little bit louder, please? yeah can you hear me now yeah i did the video mask overlay which would save the masking to a png yeah um <laughs> there's still more to do i need to store the png on the local um on the local device but that should be relatively quick okay um, I think probably the next thing to do after that is just really making tickets so that more people can help pitch in and know uh, exactly what tasks we need to do next. I think Rebecca already made a design for like what the UI would look like. So just splitting that up into different tasks that people could take on. I know, I think Janice was, or I don't know if I'm saying his name correctly, but someone was talking about doing some work on the weather API. So just making sure that everyone knows like what comes next. Exactly. Um, yeah, exactly. That's what I wanted to say shortly before you came in, that we should create a list of data that should be um, drawn in the UI, either in what few, whatever. Uh, and this list should also comprise the sources where this data comes from, the format the data is in. and our idea is when when we assembled that list of of data that we um, how you say this do a kind of a challenge a UI challenge. So anyone who uh, takes this list of data with formats and sources and so forth and and has an idea of what the format means that it's either in a text form, it's in a graphic form, it's in a 2D pixel form, it's what have you, so that they can come up with an, a user face, a user interface idea, a design idea. So the the idea is to to challenge this, to make it a challenge out of this, so that people can make their their drawings and their ideas based on this list of uh, data, and it's all data that's on that list should be seen in the in the design in the user face interface user interface design the idea is that the more people do this from their point of view we get a good overview uh, what works and what does not work and and what the final user interface will be for us so Actually, I wanted to ask Rebecca what she thinks about this idea. But Rebecca, are you there? Um, I don't know whether you can hear us, but I think you are kind I can of hear. offline. You can hear her? Richard, you need I can hear her too. Hear her. Ah, okay. Then I have to get out again. <laughs> this is my connection. <laughs> Ah, there you are. It's somehow it's in my connection that I lose you. I'm sorry. All right, then you can hear me now? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I think that's an awesome idea. Uh, 
I also even envision in the future, maybe people being able to make their own GUI at home, as long as we give them the the structure, they could actually design it at home how they would like it to look. Yeah. So that's how I was envisioning it too, actually, where it wouldn't just be one style, one design, you know, people at home, wherever they live, they can alter some of the CSS style code and they can move move the objects around where they'd like to, where they would prefer to see it. So, you know, I, I think that's a great idea. But also, you know, everybody give an idea of what they think would work and then we can come up with a definitive idea first and then people can go off of that too. Okay, so you would not challenge people from the get-go, from the very beginning. My Our idea was to, to get an idea of the user interface, how it shall be set up, because there's so much of detail, so much widget, so much data, that has to be compressed on a rather small space. And we have certainly different views, so it somehow has to be tapped or whatever. Um, the idea is that there are a million solutions to do this, but there are certainly only a handful that are good. The question is, who comes up with these good ideas? So the idea was to have a challenge so that all community members, not developers, just normal community members who have no idea of coding, you know, just uh, maybe just a pen and a paper and, and make their drawings or even take, um, I don't know, Illustrator or Inkspace, Inkscape or uh, Photoshop or whatever they work with and do their their few, draw their few of, of how they want it to, to look like. And when we get, let's say, 20 of those um, views in, then we can see what is important for people to, to have. And how do they think it should look like? And maybe we can derive from that amount of um, incoming views what what we think should in come go into the final user interface. So what do you think about this idea? Just a kind of an, it's not an award, it's just a little challenge. What do you think? I think that's an excellent idea and uh, it helps us to know how people are using, you know, Sky360 and what's what's the most important thing for them. So I think that's a great idea. It helps us to focus on what's the most important and have those features first. So yeah, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm, okay. There are, um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Is there a way to share a link with the group? Is there like a or do I just post it in like the general channel on Discord? Or do uh, you software? can share your screen. Um, I... Okay, one second. Let me figure out. It's uh, the, um, the icon next to the camera. Yep. Um, I have a lot of screens though. <laughs> one second. Okay. Uh, so one thing I was thinking is if we know all of the data sources, um, we have like, let's say 12 data sources that each are some type of widget. Um, so we could make it so the end user can, can drag all of the different widgets around in their own dashboard and resize the things that are important to them um, and kind of just configure the dashboard in the way that they want. Um, that's one idea. I think that would be really cool. Because um, let's say we have, you know, one of these is like the video player, one is the weather. There could be some default configuration, um, but each user would have the ability. Um, just imagine there's like a X or maybe a, a pop out um, that would allow them to check or uncheck different data sources and then just display the things that's most uh, important to them. Mm -hmm. um, but like with the des with the design challenge that you were talking about, maybe what what comes out of that would be the default starting place for this, and then the end users, the stationers, would begin with that, and then they could resize or move things as they see fit. Mm -hmm. um, just a thought. Mm -hmm. Are these all floating widgets or are they dockable? 
Um, when you say dockable, what do you mean? Uh, that you take one and dock it to the next one, so they always are bundled. Or you, oh, do, like you to dock it to the to left them? side of the screen. Yeah, so this would be uh, in the in the like in the browser in like the localhost browser, um, and then they would just dock to the background. So I don't know if there's a way with this tool that I'm looking at to view like a f oh yeah here's full screen so it would look like this mm -hmm. kind of if you can envision it um, yeah but if you have a second one of this widget could you dock both together so they are kind of bundled uh you mean like if you wanted to open a new tab so like let me duplicate this move it here because really it's just a browser mm -hmm. it's like an internet browser mm -hmm. So you're saying you would want to open two side by side? No, I mean it differently. Um, for example, when you are you familiar with Photoshop, for example? Make them magnetic to each side. Um, yes. Dockable menus. I don't know yeah, the I'm other words for Photoshop. this. Yeah, Photoshop. So if you if this was, if this is um, this book you read, when this widget, so ex just imagine you have a widget, second yeah, one. Uh, yeah. Yes, hold on. We can, I can just build a second one real quick. Let me just add a second one. Index up. What is this box? We want two boxes probably. Copy. Paste. Hold on, let me just add this other box and see what it does. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, I mean, oh, they're dark. Yeah, so these are stuck together. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. Um, and I'm sure there's some configuration where you can separate them and then dock okay. them if you want. Okay. But is that, so it sounds like that's what you want. Yeah. Exactly. Because it makes it easier when Yeah, so when maybe we start with Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, may yeah, maybe we start with the design challenge like you described and then that would give us the default layout for the GUI and then for people that may want, you know, some data is less relevant to them, some data is more relevant to them. There's some uh, some ability to, to customize that for their own station. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> um, talking about the the challenge, uh, Rebecca. Mm, now, actually, I have to to ask every one of us. Um, we shall create such a list of data. Uh, with format and bad data sources. Um, what do you think? Shall we do a, an Excel sheet or do you prefer anything else? Or is, have better idea than an Excel? Rebecca, what, what would we, what would you suggest? Are you suggest? Are you saying for all the users or all the developers to come up with a list of items that they want to see on the on the UI and write that down in an Excel sheet and send that to us? Yes. Remember, you were saying, we were, I think just the two of us, we were talking a week ago about such a list um, so that you have an overview over, of, over all these data points and with the sources and, and the formats they, they come in and so forth. Um, did you start working on this list yet? If not, I would suggest that um, every one of us um, contributes on an Excel sheet. We, we, um, Christian, what do you think? Shall we put this Excel sheet in software development on, on Google Drive? So give everyone, every developer access to, so we can all work on yeah. the same Excel sheet? 
meaning everyone who has an, an idea of what his part creates on data and he wants to be seen on, on the user interface just types in this kind of data this is the format this is the source yeah i think we can do that with an excel sheet and then we ha should collect something where um, where people can provide images like how they want to uh, to have the data orientated on the sheet. Mm -hmm. What do you say, Rebecca? So Is can I share my idea? screen real quick? So it sounds like we're going for something very similar to, um, this is my Synology NAS uh, with a dockable widget with selectable data sets that, you know, that's relevant to what I want to know about my system. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, creating for the kind of a GUI. Mm -hmm. So, like what you're saying with what we want to see in terms of data, it would like with climate control, like temperature, humidity, yep. Right. Yep. Uh, delta T would yep. show up over here. Yep. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, some video feeds or predictions for the cloud coverage, any data you can think of. But like, if I wanted to go in and like archive video, that kind of thing, click a button and it would kind of be in the background. Of course, this is going to take forever to load now, mm -hmm. but uh, kind of where we're going. Right. Okay. Okay. That's exactly. All right. I have a question though. Would all of the information actually be collected into one store? on Sky360 and then sent over? Or are we just gonna receive everything as it comes from each device? You know, one device says something and you know, the thermometer says something and it just sends it straight over to the GUI. The camera provides some other information. It sends it straight over to the GUI. Is that how it's gonna work? Or is it gonna all centralize first and then come over to us? Uh, that's what we have to build, and uh, this is what we have to decide. Um, there are no plans yet. Uh, How did it work for the old GUI? The old GUI from Skyhub, you mean? Yes. Uh, there was no live view, um, and it was only uh, an historic event view. And it was fixed because someone made it and it was like it was. And it was very rudimentary. So there was not a lot of data to be seen. It was a, a, a first step, let's say, but it lacked a lot um, of features from the very beginning, I'd say. These features from uh, arranging widgets, having overlays, blah, blah, blah. If we have, uh, if we go with the approach that every sensor delivers on its own, then we have the issue that all those inter uh, all those uh, sensors have to have to be collected or have to present some kind of hardware interrupt and say, okay, my data is here. Uh, we do not want any loop in it because loops have. Mm. Uh, have uh, Lock. A Lock. very much a, a very hard impact on the performance. So if we do it by hardware interrupts and deliver each sensor reading on the plate, uh, we do not have any centralized um, system that uh, forms a data stream. Because mm -hmm. for the data stream, then we have to take care of uh, how uh, the data or if any uh, of the uh, the sensors do not deliver their data. Um, if they are um, just delivering their data uh, and we collect them by hardware interrupt, um, then we're very, very freely of uh, presenting the data. If, if uh, a sensor reading isn't there, it doesn't matter. It doesn't show anything. I think that approach might be less performance redund uh, reductive. It's, uh, it might be very, very fast. Mm -hmm. Because we have to take care for for uh, the hardware 
we, we run it on. So we've got a Pi and a Jets Nano. And, you, and you the meant... Jets Nano should do the the, uh, the ML stuff, so it's occupied. And you said Pi now for the UI, the GUI server. Um, the Pi is holding the sensors from camera to temperature, everything. And it can deal with it very, very fast. And therefore, this is uh, because every sensor is connected to the Indy protocol. And the Indy uh, protocol, the, the Indy server provides all the sensor readings. But the sensor readings, Wait, they come in. what is be... this protocol? Uh, it's called Indy. It's, uh, it's a device protocol. It's a device server. Can you spell it for me? Uh, I... N D I. Okay. It's indylib.org. Yeah. I found that. Like, works. Wow, this is cool. Oh, and uh, um, just for reference. Zero, zero. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was going to ask is there a way to get like a mock of this data? So, like, one thing that's hard for me as I think about the GUI is I don't have any of this hardware. So like the data that's coming in or the data that needs to be read or connected to, it's hard for me to like understand because I don't have any devices that can produce that data. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I, was saying, oh, I was thinking that we would receive it as a in a JSON format or a text file and save it in the React store. Uh, well, what would happen is we would receive it probably through uh, Django channels, save it to the red. Right, right, the red what, like what, what, we have to build those Django channels. So like what endpoint is the data going to be sent to? Uh, how often? Is that it, I don't know. Should we, yeah, those are my questions. I was, I was thinking of Django channels. It's kind of like socket IO. So we could receive it over you know, through the socket, uh, we could receive it as a REST API. So that's kind of what we have to decide. Uh, is it going to just be transmitted to us as a file that we read off of our server through a socket, REST API? That's what we got to decide. Um, Christian, do you have any ideas? Um, I'm working on the, the video stream right now. This is what the next week is uh, set up for. Uh, I think w we, we shall talk uh, during the week uh, how the video stream is uh, coming up. And uh, we should focus on that the video stream is the first data stream we set up. And um, as, as long as we know how that is coming along, then we can decide for the others. Um, one thing I saw is, and maybe this is, I shouldn't even be looking at this, but the, in GitLab Skyhub, I noticed there was, hold on, where is it? Tracker UI. Um, the way that we yeah. did the videos before, let me try to find it real quick. Uh, live view. Um, okay. I'll paste it. Oh, let me share my screen just really quick. Um, here, I noticed what happened in the previous iteration is we had a video where the source was RTSP and then yep. like a Skyhub um, yep. IP and port. Is, are we just going to do that? Uh, no, because we do not have any IP camera. We've, uh, we have uh, a USB camera connected to the Indy, uh, to the uh, Indy server. Okay. And this is producing a stream. And at the moment, we are going for GStreamer, but we could use FFmpeg. Mm, OK. Yeah, whenever yeah, you have like it. a sample of that data or something, um, that'll be super yeah. helpful. So that way we can make sure that the GUI is set up to consume the data. Um, interesting. Okay. So I, I posted a, a snapshot or a screenshot of what the old GUI like 
mine never worked because I was one of the people who found or discovered the bug yeah. in the Skyhub, basically. Um, I don't know if there's a way to, like... I mean, there's other things besides just the uh, the video that comes through. There's a GPS signal that comes through. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean we, we have to answer the, this exact question for every piece of data that we want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I found the idea about um, passing it uh, to the sockets uh, very interesting. I think it could be a good way to separate all the data streams from each other and then just decide which one we want to to show yeah okay so i have to look into the the, the input stuff of the sockets mm -hmm. okay um should be something generalized that would be very easy to to fill with data Yeah, maybe maybe where we start is making a socket endpoint in the GUI that will log the data it's receiving. And then um, you can run it locally and hopefully just have an address to point to. And you should be able to see the data being logged as long as it's uh, as long as the connection is happening. Would that be helpful? <clears throat> Yeah, are there any experience how much um, performance that consumes on the system? Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, Rebecca, do you have some experience with the sockets and uh, the performance? Uh, well, not with the Sky360 station, but I would think you were saying that you wanted to send data uh, not not on regular intervals, but whenever something changes. Uh, that you would send data? Yeah. Okay, so it's we would yeah, kind of it's asynchronous. Uh, Everything's would... asynchronous. Okay, so you would transmit that data when something changes over to us through the socket, and we would receive it, and we would notice that it had changed, and then we would update it. Um, and you were asking me if that would affect the, the Sky360 station. I'm not really sure. I, I would just say that it, Sky360 mm -hmm. is doing whatever it's doing. And then when something changes, it'll send us a notification through the socket. And then we would update the GUI. Mm. How much time? I have is okay. like, so that makes sense for some things. But f for the video, it would be continuous. Would it not, or is it, are we doing like one frame per second, or it's completely like a live stream? It should be a live stream. Okay, so some data we would be polling or doing some sort of like sampling, but for the video, we it would be continuous. Yes. Okay. Guys, I, I have I to go. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Lyle. Bye, see you. Yeah. See you. Bye. I would receive it with socket IO first, mm -hmm. and then with the connection interrupts or whatever, then it goes to long polling. So that way you always try to ensure continuous uh, reception of whatever it is you're sending. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking of <clears throat> how suitable is that for the video feed, because um, the, the video stream uh, has to be uh fed into the ml stuff uh and um the event handling uh, then should be triggered if let's say a new ap is found then the um the the tracking and the the uh, path calculating has to be done and that has to be given to the ptz very very quickly so the ptz can Slew to the position or to an to uh, an intercepting position. Um, how we how we are going to get that done with a live stream not interfering those calculations? Um, how's the timing about that? Um, 
do the socket IO um, is is it very performant? Is it very quickly? Does it need? I think the the timing of the socket IO would be negligible. The bulk of the timing would be spent in the AI. Okay. And I I don't know how fast that is. But this is a, I a data transfer part. over the the network, the LAN. Right, uh, no, not exactly. If I can manage to connect uh, the Pi with the uh, Jets Nano via GPIO, then we do not uh, have to go uh, through the Ethernet connection because Ethernet isn't real time able. Yes, to to the Nano for for processing, but. Um... <clears throat> If we, have we, we can split the stream. If we have so, a user interface uh, uh, server, another Pi that that's acts as a user interface server because we do not want to load this on the Nano. Yeah, but okay, then we've got a, a small time delay uh, for the display. Yeah, okay. okay, we can live with that. Yeah, I would say we can live with this <clears throat> with a little time delay on the user interface, but not on the on the on the detection. <laughs> yeah. That that's why I was asking about the form um, the performance of the socket I O. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay, we we're going for that because mm -hmm. it's it's a pretty good option and it's a mm, approach and um, so we have to uh, build up something that that duplicates the stream. And socket IO is uh, because on available on Linux for for the Pi as well. So yeah, uh, I think question. it's part of Django. <laughs> okay. It is. Okay. With with Django, I think you'll need to use Django channels, but our setup, our GUI setup, has Django as well as Node, and so we're going to have to go from receiving it through Django. And then transferring it over to Node. And Node, we can use Socket IO. Django, we should use Django channels. I think Socket IO on Django channel uh, on Django is four years out of date. Oh. So it would be Django channels. Okay, Django channels. Mm -hmm. Okay. Make some notes. Yep. Yeah, we we are at an important point here because um, this this is important uh, um, to how the video feed should be uh, be be swept over everything we have. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Django channels. Oh. I just saw Brad's picture. The old GUI looks kind of cool. Which GUI? <clears throat> the Skype GUI? Oh. Yeah, he posted it in the GUI channel. Yeah. But it was inflexible in the... Yeah. But it, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it did for a while, but it then, then it stopped. And... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, looking cool and working are different things. <laughs> Definitely. And what what I'm what I miss the most is that y y you have to switch from tab to tab to to come from uh, <clears throat> the last five events to the archive of events. There's so much unlogic in it. So that I think that's why a total front end where everything is accessible in one view makes much more sense yeah hey rebecca is not there oh there she is again so okay um we follow the idea of first collecting all information on data that is to be displayed we collect this in an excel file on the drive so that everyone has access to and we ask every developer or from their part what kind of data they uh, their part is producing so that we get an idea of uh, yeah what the forms of those the formats of those uh, data will be 
And when this list is done, we can publish this list of data for others to come up with user interface ideas. We we'll make a kind of a challenge, let that run for, for a month or so, collect it, come back and say what, what parts are good and can be used in the future. Is there a mailing list for existing stationers? Um, no, even the, the situation with the existing stationers is a little bit a gray zone because some are building up, some are finished, uh, have installed Skyhub, which is at the moment, yeah, for me it is working, but um, it's producing a lot of uh, noise, uh, not, not signal yeah. material, but very much noise material. Yours is still working? Mine is working, of course. God, how did I lose? <laughs> I can I can make a, an ST with an image if you want. No, no, I'm good with how I am. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of station years are dormant because they're they're not they're recording massive amounts of information, so they're not really active. They have got the hardware, but they're just not yeah. actively going through the thousands of videos. Yeah. Especially because right now there's this issue with the, the current code that demands DeepStream 5, I assume, or DeepStream 4, I'm not sure yet, but uh, this is not available at the moment. So people having issues with installing the old Skyhub software because DeepStream version not available somehow. Something. So that's, that's one situation. And the other is uh, our Sky360 is not, not done yet, uh, the software. So we, from the software side, we are still based on the Skyhub thing with these issues. So yeah, that's why it's a big gray zone. But the equipment is there. So when you go to the, to the world map on the website, you see who, who built a station, although that station might not be running at the moment. Is that what you want yeah, to know? Yeah, we, we, we did some, some color coding to indicate which uh, station is already built, which is in the process of being built, and um, yeah. Yeah, but it's work in progress. Cool. Is that what you wanted to know, Brandon? Uh, I was kind of curious because uh, once we could collect the initial like uh, set of data that we want to display on the GUI. I was thinking maybe we could, s s you could email out that challenge to stationers. Um, but if, if we don't have any way to do that, then that's fine. Um, we have uh, over 1000 people here in the, in the Discord channel. Um, I publish it, um, call it to everyone and um, let's see who picks it up, the challenge. Yeah. We can even cool. um, give an award out. So for everyone who who submits um, a user interface, a complete one <laughs> that we, we can use and really work with, um, can get something. Um, we ha we will have merch in the, in, in the near future. So we can give away merch art articles. So for example, this will help. Let's see. One free thing too would just be maybe putting their name on some type of uh, like thank you says uh, list or something similar to like patronship um, somewhere on the <coughs> website, and then that would just be a free kind of prize. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. The, the idea came up today, so yeah, we have to think about it. Uh, but I think first of all, we should focus on this list because the list is needed yeah. anyways. And yep. when the list is done, let's say in one or two weeks, then we can kick off uh, the user interface challenge. Cool. Yeah? I think it's a fun idea because it involves people in our community that are not coders and wanted to contribute yeah. in a way, but have no idea how. That's that's yep. the point. That's what I hear very often when people come in and they want to build their station. Okay, they start with the reading and, and ordering and drilling and tinkering. And then comes the point and where's the software? And now the software is in development. So what I shall what shall I do now? Um, so 
I want to involve those people a little bit and, and so they can contribute because they want to contribute. Awesome. Okay. So anything else about the user interface? Otherwise, we jump over to the next topic. Brad, you want to say something? Uh, I actually think we covered most of what we're talking about um, in the meeting prior to this. And since George isn't here, I don't know that it's really useful to rehash it all. Okay. Because me, you, and Boyan were all present for that. So. Yeah, true. I'd like to get started uh, with my printer in here, making the parts. <laughs> Let the cheese grow. Hopefully okay. I'll set my house on fire. Yeah, please don't. <laughs> so, people, um, yeah, it's just one and a half hours today. I'm, we don't have to expand the, 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 the meeting just because. If you have other topics, please raise them now. So, if not, then I will say we close it for today. Okay with you all? As you wish. Uh, you know, just... Uh... Me, I'm trying to get, you know, kind of back in sync with everybody and what's yeah. going on, so. Good, good to see you again, and uh, good to uh, see you in a, in a health shape now. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm glad to be kind of kind of back, but just so you know, I will probably be a bit erratic here for a bit yet. Um, you know, for example, no David gave me a whole bunch of uh, acoustic information, which I would like to get some of that kind of monitoring going on. All right. And it's like this grounding in, in things. But I do like the, the, the GUI idea. Um, and I've been sitting here formulating some ideas of what I want to get in there um, or how I'd like to, you know, see it work. And uh, do we want to do it just real quick? Do we want to send that sort of thing into that GUI? Um, um, uh, what do you want to call it? Sub-column in there? Or is that going to be something we're going to set up a little differently? You mean the channel on Discord? Yeah. No, you know, we got all these things like machine learning, GUI, intern, and so on. We do, do we want to have people, when you put the thing out there, do you want them to go back into that channel as far as for their responses? Actually, yes. Just as a, a, a organizational kind of thing. Yeah. You know. It's it's to the channels, um, it's it's topics. And it makes sense yeah. if the topics stay clean in a way. So. Yeah. Yeah, because that's one of those things, too, Just just as a... Since I'm kind of, you know, coming back, trying to get back into it, I noticed the number of, of sub-channels there, you know, uh, channels, has expanded a lot. And so um, so where do I want to put something back in there? Because I have some things I want to uh, start getting back, you know, put in there. And they're more or less things like enclosure and some mounting details and some mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. um, because one of those things is I've fallen way behind on my build. But um, one of the things here... here um, for those of you who don't know, I'm in southern Washington in the U.S. And over um, um, New Year's New Year's weekend, on like Sunday night, we got about 85, 90 centimeters of snow. And nice. so one thing I've been looking at is in terms of the enclosure, the thing would have been entirely buried. And in spite of the fact the camera seems to run a little warm and so on, you'd never see anything if it was happening. And I still actually have snow on the ground from that even though for the last week, you know, the temperature has been up around, you know, 10 or so. And um, so it, it's inspiring me to, to do some mounts that are considerably deeper, you know, and so they'll, they'll stand, you know, far clear of the, uh, you know, I'm planning to put the basic tracker on my yeah. roof. And the idea is I'll stand quite a bit clear of that. Yeah. So that, okay, it, it dumps a bunch of snow, it's a so what, because, you know, call me weird, I just want, you know, I want the thing to always work and, you uh, um, I did find out, uh, again, some other things. It's kind of superfluous to, to the conversation here. But um, anyway, so that's kind of inspired me to redo what I'm going to use for an actual enclosure and how I'm going to set it up. And so I want to post those things back in, and they'll be either in enclosures or what was the other one I liked? Uh, fabrication. So, you know, just a, as a, okay, yeah. I did this. You know, if this helps you with your implementation, fantastic. If it doesn't, ignore it. But uh, so I... I I don't, know if I, I don't want to see a proliferation of those little different sections, but I do want them, you know, in a, a, a pretty good organization so that, like in the case of the, the GUI, you know, challenge, when, when you put it out there, I assume that's going to go on like the general channel there, but you'd want it to come back, you know, responses to go back in the GUI channel so that you know that that's what it's all relevant to. Yeah. Did, did that, did that yeah. make some sense? Yeah, absolutely. I hope. Yeah. 
Okay. So Richard and I are going to spend some time this week. Like we inherited a lot of these channels from Skyhub, and they had an original purpose, and some of them still do. Some of them it kind of blends in. So we're actually going to take a look at all the channels and and think about that this week, and maybe do a little bit of revision. So. Okay. Well, if there's anything I can do to help on that, let me know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Great. Good stuff. Thank yeah. you. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, and um, what what else can you do? You can go to the YouTube our YouTube channel and check out all the videos that we produced up to now, all the developer meeting videos, so that you get up to date. Yeah. If you want to. Yeah, that's that's all in the plan. So I, just so you know, they, they 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 talk about a phenomenon called brain fog, which I actually had before I came down with COVID nineteen. <laughs> it's just a lot worse right now. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, I am trying to get me back in sync and back on the, uh, you know, because uh, I do want to be a, you know, useful part of the group. You yeah, know, absolutely. And, and, As uh, we all want. Perfect. So, yeah. Yeah, I know. It's kind of weird, huh? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know where I get these strange ideas, but um, it is true. <laughs> and um, so, so I, I do have to kind of, I've got some both mental and practical matter catching up to be doing. So, all right. All right. Uh, anyway, that's uh, like I said. I just wanted to uh, get in my remarks there on on how to organize it so that yeah. because like I said, I'm seeing this proliferation of channels, and now, well, I've got a, a mount for a weather station. Okay, that I that I happen to use. It's not the uh, officially defined one for uh, you know for the project, but it it in my case it happens to predate my involvement with the project, and I just want to keep using it. And so that from a from a practical you know from a hardware and software perspective that argues for a very modular approach in terms of um you know getting back to the ui bit mm -hmm. so that i see my weather data over here and i can just import that into you know the ai that's actually looking at at, at the whole phenomenon you know that whole core purpose but i want to break that back out you know when i see it i'd like to see oh here's here's weather you know yay great you know and here's whatever you know the ai said oh this is something of interest and so on, but so I, so I tend to prefer a pretty modular approach there, um, but uh, I don't want to see speed suffer either. And so again, this is me just talking out loud. I do apologize there, but um, you when know, you're talking um, about your weather station. Uh, you can talk to Yannick. Yannick is the one with the blue, the light blue um, visual here. Mm -hmm. Yannick. Yeah. Uh, he's a climatologist uh, um, from Germany. Yes. Ah. So oh, if you fantastic. want to talk climatology stuff, you are in good hands. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, I'm okay. not quite that far along. I mean, right now it's just it's just standing there being a um, it's it's one of these little tempest weather uh, stations, and so right now it's just standing there doing that. And um, but I do like the fact that it already, you know, accumulates data. Mm -hmm. um, it actually, um, as I understand it, it actually is. Uh, uh, the company that actually builds these things, you know, it's, it's actually an online system. And so it basically provides input into, um, here in the U.S., the uh, NOAA, you know, National Oceanic and, and Atmospheric Administration's databases. And you can also pull up those weather stations all over the world individually. And to me, the benefit to this project <clears throat> is simply that even if, <clears throat> excuse me, even if I don't have one of these things out in my front yard, I get a detector hit of some sort. You know, I can read mine because I happen to have it. But um, there's also, like in in my in my neighborhood neighborhood, uh, um, there's actually a couple others. So I can actually go see what they are seeing also. Yeah. And um, Tempest has got these things all over the world, which is impressive. Yeah. And uh, you know, as long as the whoever the the person that actually has the thing up there doesn't block it, then you know, you can actually go read. One like you know you get a detect wherever you can say oh where's the nearest one you can go read it for weather yeah. data yeah exactly you know? that, that's that's the task that up. Yannick is on right, right now yeah, um, yeah. yeah. sorry okay. I, for the last ten minutes or so I zoned out a little bit because I'm uh, I started working on uh, some stuff here related mm -hmm. related to the project okay so um, yeah. no, but no. in any case yeah we have a weather API. Yeah. running so we can request weather data yeah. from around the world yeah okay well again it's yeah. just you know i've been sitting here in the in the dark you know 
uh, being snowed in <laughs> quite nicely and some other things. But uh, anyway, but but just getting back to the GUI bit, which is where I started, and I, I do tend to rattle on these days, I apologize. But the idea there is we have a modular approach to it, so I can import my weather sensors. Because one of the things I did notice in the original um, Skyhub thing was it did have the breakdown in the in the parts list for all the weather sensing pieces, you know. And that's great. You know, I, I do believe in capturing as much data about the environment when you have a sighting. Mm. Um, but but like I said, at that point, I'd already purchased a Tempest system to characterize a site for a different project. Mm. So it's already standing there. It's already putting out data. So, hey, I want to grab that and just use it. And uh, I'd want our approach to allow that kind of thing. Or if you do build the, the weather sensors into your hub right there, fantastic. You know, you just read those and so on. Yep. So anyway, I'll, yep. I'll, I'll shut up and let, the, let things in. Um, <laughs> no, no, know, good input. But, uh, and that's, yeah. that's also part of our um, philosophy. Um, the, the idea yeah. to have um, not only external data sources from weather information, mm -hmm. which Yannick is actually mm -hmm. working on, but also to have local mm -hmm. uh, devices that can deliver local uh, weather mm -hmm. situations. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What is um, this company so, called? Tempest? Yeah. Oh, did I get that um, one? Uh, here, it's, it's uh, da, 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 pardon me. Um, yeah, um, basically, yeah, it's called Tempest and um, uh, Tempest Weather Flow. And uh, one of their websites is uh, yeah, you're gonna find it somewhere on the web. Yeah, it I think uh, I found it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I take a look, um, uh, look at that. So well, guys, I... to... okay. yeah, wxcom slash stations. It'll it'll actually take you out to where their their station map. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I've so... got a short question to Yannick. Um, yes. Do do you think um, the 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 images of the clouds and the the movement of the clouds from the fisheye camera can uh, can help by um, getting a better forecast for the cloud coverage and the development of the cloud coverage uh, for the um, f for your uh, work with the with the climate stuff. Um, I haven't uh, worked on this cloud forecasting thing yet, so... No, 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 uh, my, my, my question was... Uh, I understand what the, you mean. Could um, the data that we, we collect help you with that? Yeah, I see what you mean. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure because there's, for example, uh, clear sky situations where you have where you have a clear sky and then there's a cloud front or weather system coming so which you don't see on your um, fish eye camera then so there might be situations where it could help but there are also i think a lot of situations where it would not help at all so mm -hmm. um, i'm not sure if it's worth the time spending the time um, it's maybe maybe what i think it could be cool to have um to to analyze the the images and uh determine the the current cloud coverage based on the image mm -hmm. that could be interesting i think but yeah that's what i was referring to because um yeah. in astronomy we have got the problem that the forecast is very inaccurate sometimes mm. The, the, the upcoming clouds uh, from the forecast are up to three to six uh, uh, hours late. Sometimes they are already there and uh, are suggested to be there in about two hours or so. Um, maybe there's a way that uh, the the actual imagery uh, from the, the fish eye can help uh, develop a better forecast for that. Yeah, I mean, if we assume that we have a lot of cameras in place and they are all connected basically and collect and sharing the data, then I think you can imagine that it could be helpful some someday, but I think you would 
have to imagine that we have a lot of systems in place at the same time and in different I think if we are Places able to the... build a, a meteorological forecasting system that's better than what's publicly available, um, we would all be able to retire. I have a feeling <laughs> that's going to be a very hard challenge to solve. Um, yeah, and I, I, what I'm still not sure about is if we, for this project, really urgently need this cloud coverage forecast. Because right now I'm more thinking about weather alerts, for example, um, and the actual current weather data um, and historical weather data to characterize the situation when we have made observations. Um, I'm currently more thinking about that because I, I don't imagine people sitting there and looking what the camera is fetching in real time mm -hmm. over a whole night or so or but that's just me so if i have a system i probably won't spend no. the nights looking what the camera is viewing no. um so I, I i just wait for the for situations when the camera is actually catching something exactly. an object and then i'm looking at the video that this that was captured or when the event starts and you start looking and you see the event yeah. expand itself, yeah. In real time. Exactly. Yeah, that would be awesome if you if you get an alert or something yeah. on your on your phone or whatever, or via email. Yeah, that would be awesome, I guess. The idea and and, and I think it was from Brandon um, to to use Discord and the notification from Discord because we have a Discord API and we can trigger notifications there oh yeah because yeah. you already have discord so why use some, something different the infrastructure yeah. and the services is all there yeah so um is there anything again so i would say is there anything else sorry um uh, we want to discuss because 20 minutes left <laughs> if not i would say we close it for today and i stop uh,